Three, two, one. Okay, today I'd like to show you how to build a vehicle for the Science Olympiad competitions in 2023. Uh, this vehicle actually that I'm gonna build today is for the event Wheeled Vehicle. Uh, it's a elastic powered vehicle and the elastic could be roadband, it could be a flexible material like a piece of bamboo or a piece of carbon fiber like a, the end of a fishing rod. But today I'm going to simply make one with a roadband. And I built kits for these and all the list of materials for those kits is also going to be in the description. Okay, so first let's go through the parts. So for the chassis you need some stiff material that's easy to cut and easy to work with. And I like especially to use corrugated plastic and it comes underneath some brand names i don't recall what they are but you can buy this at home depot or at walmart you can also just get an old sign uh one of those political signs and you can cut strips of it and use that another alternative to this is balsa is my second favorite thing to use you could also use uh, cardboard or foam board those I find break down after a little while and uh, they don't stay as stiff, but you can definitely use those and just uh, reinforce them a little bit more. You need something for the wheels and today we're going to use uh, CDs uh, for the wheels. And the CDs here, um, in order to actually give them traction, we put a rubber material. In this case, it's just a balloon, a piece of balloon cut and put over the CD. Uh, you could also use a rubber band around it, but I find those are really hard to deal with. The uh, balloon, you can cut a thicker strip and it's easier, easier to get it on. It usually does take some work to get it on. Okay, you need uh, something to attach the CDs to the axles. So these are the hubs, and I have two different sizes, one for a three millimeter axle and another set for two millimeter axles. So then you need two axles, one that's going to drive the vehicle. In this case, I have a two millimeter um, by a hundred millimeter in length axle. And here we're gonna use this for the brake. This is a M3 or three millimeter screw with a wing nut that's gonna be used for the braking axle. Then to hold the axles in place, I have two 3D printed parts and the files will be down below. This is for the two millimeter drive axle. And this is for the three millimeter braking axle. Additionally, I have some zip ties. I have an extra little piece of corrugated plastic, popsicle stick, a couple um, toothpicks, and a note card. And then regular building materials. I have some scotch tape, hot glue, uh, scissors, CA glue that goes by the brand Super Glue, but it's cyanoacrylate. Accelerator, which helps speed up the reaction of the super glue or CA glue, um, its reaction for uh, polymerizing. And it actually, I buy it in these big bottles, which I'm going to put off to the side. Uh, and then I dispense them into smaller bottles that I can add drop by drop. Okay, so we're going to get started building. So I'm going to clear off some of this stuff and start by putting on the axles. Um, the axles are probably the most important part. You really want to get your axle holders on here uh, very straight. So I'm going to set this up using my mat here. And we we're going to put them on. And I'm going to do my best to make sure that they're on the plastic straight. Um, to attach them, I highly recommend using hot glue. And don't put a lot of hot glue on it at first. Um, I would just put a couple strips on the side where it attaches to it. Uh, I, I don't think you should put a lot of hot glue on it yet because you may find that it, it, the vehicle is turning and you may have to rip it off and glue it back on. Once you find that your vehicle is going straight, then I would add CA glue and permanently attach it. So this one actually, they both stick out the axles from the vehicle and I did not do that here so I am actually going to rip this off and redo it I'll put a little bit more hot glue because this one uh, expands a, it juts out a little bit from the vehicle more than I expected it to Okay, 
Okay, now whenever you use hot glue, if you press down on the piece and uh, sing happy birthday to yourself twice, that is enough time for it to dry solid. I usually sing it once and just don't put a lot of force on it afterwards. Okay, so that is the bottom. Okay, and then um, we also need to attach the hubs to the wheels. Now again, these uh, CDs have already a balloon attached to them. And the way I do that is I take a balloon, cut off the end, and I make two strips. You can sometimes get three out of them, but I'm just gonna make two. And then open up the balloon, and you put it around the wheel. That's really helpful if you have two people to do this because it kind of bunches up on your finger. All right, so there's the balloon wrapped around the uh, CD. Then um, you need to put the uh, hubs on the CDs and these are made out of TPU, uh, so they are flexible. And at first, you're just gonna pop them on. Eventually, if your vehicle is running fine, I highly recommend you also put a drop of CA glue onto them and make it permanent. So to uh, put them on, take your CD and lie it above the hub and then press right around the hub. Don't push back over here because you'll crack it and pop it on. Okay, so I'm gonna pop those two on. Okay, and then I'm also going to get the ones that will go on the braking side on. That CD has got a little damage on this one. There we go. Okay. All right, next thing I want to put on is the hubs Sorry, the axles, although my axle holder just popped off, so let me redo that. I'm gonna actually put stuff all the way down here this time. And make sure it's straight. There we go. Um, okay, so we're gonna put on the drive axle. So you roll that through here. And I'm gonna place on the screw axle. Now the way the uh, screw works is that while the wheels turn, this is going to move and it's gonna eventually press up against the uh, axle here and stop it. So you will need to get that on so that it will break correctly. Now I may put this in here opposite. I may have to flip this later. Uh, I'm just gonna put it on for now and I kind of expect you guys to do that too, um, to uh, work with it later. But actually I forgot something. Um, to get the uh, hubs on here nicely and to allow it to slide around and not um, wiggle too much, I'm gonna add some scotch tape to the ends You want about a centimeter of scotch tape. And you do not want that much. And you can cut off the extra. Okay, then slide them in once they have tape on them. This vehicle, by the way, the uh, braking part's gonna be in the front. So the wheels are gonna be turning like this. And so I actually want my wing nut to be turning this way, I believe.
So the amount of tape that you put on does matter. If it is too tight and it does not move around, then you need to pull off a little bit of tape. That's pretty good though. Okay, so once you have the two axles in, then you wanna put on the right uh, wheels onto each side. So this is the two millimeter smaller hubs. And the way to put them on actually is to, actually you can do this separately for the back one first. You wanna push this on. This takes a little bit of force. Okay, and that keeps the wheel from falling off, the fact that it has force required. Okay, the other side then, I'll push it on too. You'll notice I pushed the inside part, the small part here, towards the axle holder. Okay, and then you want to push them on nicely. Um, but you don't want them so tight that the wheels don't move. So you need to actually pull them out a little bit and make sure that your wheels move freely. Okay. So same thing for the back side. I'm gonna pop the wheels in. I'm using the scissors just as a hard surface. You could use something safer to push up against it. All right, so the same thing in the back, you want them, the wheels pushed in so they're not falling off, but not pressed up against the axle holder so that the wheels don't move. So you should see that they move nicely. Okay. In order to drive the vehicle, we're going to attach a road band to the front axle here. So what we're gonna do is take a zip tie, wrap it around, pull it tight. When I'm teaching students how to do this, they usually don't pull it tight enough. Um, you may want to get a tool out and have them pull on it. Okay, and then here is where you use the CA. My CA container is old. Um, be careful when you have students do this, if they haven't used CA, that they don't touch the CA and that they are wearing goggles. Um, I have had students before tell me they almost touched their eyes. Okay, so the zip tie can't move, so that's why we really wanna get that on there tight. If you don't trust your students with CA, you can have them hot glue it too. Um, I recommend them hot gluing the area, then sliding it over that area, then adding more hot glue. It becomes kind of a mess, but it definitely works. Okay, so I added some accelerator just to speed up the process. Okay, and I'm gonna cut off the extra with my scissors right here. So I'm gonna let that dry a little bit, but I'm gonna keep going. Next, um, in order to hold the rubber band, we're gonna add a popsicle stick in the back here. And you want the popsicle stick to go all the way to the end of the wheels. This popsicle stick is actually going to do two things. It's going to hold the road band and also hold the dowel that's used for timing. So I'm just going to place it down real quick in the middle, measure out where the center, where the end is. Again, it has to go all the way to the end of the wheels. And then I'm going to take hot glue and I'm going to run a strip of hot glue to that line and press my popsicle stick on that and hold that. Okay, so now you actually have a working vehicle. Um, it doesn't do everything that it's supposed to do yet. We're gonna go over the last few things, but um, to kind of test it out, you can attach a roller band to here and then you attach the road band to this end and you turn the wheels and then uh, the vehicle will go. I move stuff out of the way. Okay, 
So the other requirements really for the vehicle is you have to be able to take a brand new number two pencil and push down um, on something that gets it to go um, from the top. So you can't push from the sides, so you have to push down from the top. So you have to set up something to uh, actually start it that way. So we are going to set up a little trigger. So that is what this little other piece of corrugated plastic is for. And I'm going to take, and not in the center, but I'm gonna to go towards the end, and I'm gonna push this paper clip through it. Now, if you need help, you could use a drill or something, but I'm gonna push hard through both sides. And I'm gonna fold the paper clip so that we have a setup that looks like this. Okay, so basically, um, we're gonna have a lever that we can push on here and it's going to release the row band on the other side. So then what you need to do is we need to get it into, into the uh, vehicle. So I recommend um, trying to find two places that are exact. You can measure. I'm going to estimate here really quick, just make two dots where it's gonna go. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna push through the plastic Maybe I'll take my pencil actually and push hole through first a little bit, or a toothpick actually. Use a toothpick, push it through first, both places. It's a little easier to use than trying to push the paper clip through. Okay, then I'm gonna push the paper clip through. Okay, and I'm gonna leave it like that. Now, this will be able to hold against the zip tie that's in front. Now I, I didn't measure the length. What I'm gonna do is just cut, trim a little bit of this um, in order so that it hits up against it. So I'm actually gonna pull this out real quick, trim, put it back in. Okay. So that's gonna hold up against that. I also recommend folding your paper clip down and hot gluing it on the back side so it stays in one place. Or you could use CA, of course, for that. So hot glued, sitting like that. And now I have a lever that I can push like this and release my vehicle. Uh, another idea I've heard is you could use a um, binder clip and attach something with a binder clip to hold the wheel in place, which is a great idea as well. Okay, so I'm gonna let the hot glue dry, but while I do that, I'm going to put on the uh, dowel. Now the dowel has to go less than one centimeter from the ground and reach up more than 20 centimeters um, from that point. I usually like to just measure out 21 centimeters and make it a little bit longer than it's required to be, and instruct students obviously to make it a little longer, uh, so that anybody measuring, if they're mismeasuring, um, or if it's just slightly off, no one measures it to the detriment and of the team and causes them to be disqualified. Okay, I have this fun little chopper here that I like to use and have students use that will pop, we'll cut those. Um, these, by the way, also, uh, you can print those. Okay, so I have a 21 centimeter dowel that is a quarter inch in diameter. That's usually the rules, although the rules have changed over the years and they have had asked for different things. Make sure always that you check your rules. Uh, I made this uh, tutorial using the draft rules and it may not be uh, correct when they release the permanent rules. So please double check those rules. Okay, so um, in order to hold the dowel, the dowel has to be the frontmost part. The wheels can't be in front according to the rules this year. So we need to make something to attach it to. So I'm going to use the same paper clip, I mean same popsicle stick, to attach uh, the dowel to. And I need to be able to attach it so it stays there well. So uh, for now, I'm going to use this note card. You may want to try something else, cardboard, something else to attach it. It's a fun little problem for students usually to figure out 
how to attach. Um, but I am going to make a little straight area here by kind of making a triangle here. And then we're going to fold whatever part of the triangle meets the, the popsicle stick. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue on both sides here. And then I'm going to pinch it down. Well, that's not going to work. Pull it forward a little. We want this to be flat. I'm going to try again. Again, one of the reasons why I like hot glue. Let me take that off. It's time. I'm going to start with hot glue here. that dry. I'll flip the vehicle over. Then I'm going to put blue in the front of the dowel. Make sure when you put the dowel on that you measure and you make sure that it is less than one centimeter in the ground. So you'll see now this is my attachment. It's wobbly. I am not a big fan of that right now. So I'm going to try to make it a little bit tighter and put a little more hot glue underneath then I'm gonna put a side triangle that's going to strengthen it I think You know, this is one of the last things I thought of to uh, build, and it's one of the last things students will think of, but it is important to have, otherwise you will get disqualified or tiered, depending on what the rules state, so make sure you do it right. So, I put a little side triangle there, and now it holds really tight, and um, I'm just for good fun, I'm going to put one on the other side too. Uh, these things will take a beating, and they need to be able to... Take a beating. Now students, obviously, are supposed to be building these, and they need to build them in part so they understand how they work, and also in case they break. I've had many students go to competition before and break their builds, and they're usually prepared to fix them, and can usually still get good results, even though they've had kind of an emergency. All right, so um, the build is basically done. So we have uh, a row band, and students can try to change what row band there is. You wrap it around the front zip tie, you turn the wheels, okay? You have to set your brake, and there are some explanations of how the brake works um, elsewhere, but basically what you want to do is you want to start with your brake engaged, uh, your wing nut here, to be completely touching the brake pad, which is going to be this part of the axle holder part of the axle holder okay and then you count back how many times you want it uh, to go you want to imagine kind of the vehicle going backwards now you'll notice that my vehicle is like kind of moving in here again that's an issue you want to make sure that this is really tight on here and once you're kind of set you do want to glue that in place so it won't move around on you um, it shouldn't be able to do that back and forth. So I'm going to push this on here a little bit more. And just make sure it's still free flowing. There we go. 
Okay, it still could go a little bit further, but I don't wanna do that for now. Okay, so now to uh, start it, you wanna push that down, this, this in place, and it'll hold it in place. Okay, and then again, you take a unused number two pencil, which I don't have at my disposal right now. Move all the stuff out of the way. And you push, you start the vehicle. Okay, I wanna just show a quick run with the vehicle. So I've already wound the vehicle. I set the brake for random distance. I have not calibrated it for anything. And I'm gonna set it over my starting point here. The starting point um, is a dot on a five centimeter piece of masking tape. And then I'm gonna just kinda of straighten up my vehicle. Um, there should be one other thing that I'm gonna show in a second is there should be a targeting system too so that you can actually get it to go straight without any lines or tiles. Now I'm gonna use my tiles right now to kind of make it go straight, but usually in competitions you cannot do that. So I'm gonna to put two toothpicks here that you can match up like a sight in a gun towards a target that someone can set. Okay, but here, I again, I have my robe in, I have a brake set at a random distance. Okay, so the wing nut set at a, at a random distance here. And I'm gonna start with my brand new number two pencil just by pushing down here. We're gonna watch the vehicle. Okay. So that did not work right. What's going on? Okay, I found in the last test that the uh, trigger was re-falling down and stopping it. So I just tightened up the trigger so it won't move back. You could put a counterweight or row band on this side, uh, possibly hold it in place. But for now, I just kind of squeezed in the paper clip and I think that will hold. So I'm going to uh, try again here. I'm going to click. Oh, try two failed. Okay, this is test three. What I've done is move the trigger so that it's more in the middle so that it won't uh, fall back down on itself and re-stop uh, the vehicle. So, set up again. Gotta move it to the target point there. Okay, three, two, one. Okay, and uh, the vehicle stopped. And one thing to check at the end is to make sure the vehicle actually was braking or if it ran out of power. Now it was rolling at the end, it would have kept going. Um, this is about eight or so meters. Um, okay, so that's a successful uh, run. It is moving a little to the uh, right, so I would think about, of course, that and talk about that with students, how to get it to run more straight. Okay, I wanna show one more thing. I'm gonna do that back on the desktop. Okay, I wanted to show you again my quick mod that I made. So I moved the paper clip to the middle of the plastic, so that way it would balance out and be straight. Also gave it a little bit of resistance, um, just kind of squeeze in on the paper clip, so it doesn't easily move. You have to actually push it, um, so hopefully it won't fall back down. But again, you could put a counterweight or put like a rubber band down here to hold it once you released it down in place. Just check the rules, make sure to any other energy input into the vehicle can't be used for going forward usually. There's some rule about that, so just double check that rule. Okay, the last thing I wanna do is in order to do really well in the event, you need to be able to target and go straight. Well, one of the basic ways to target that I like most actually is just to put two paper clips, I mean, two toothpicks, one in the front, one in the back. That's where the axle is, so I can't stick it there. So the one there, and then with uh, the corrugated plastic, I can see where straight is. And so I can mark my other point here. You could measure those out and make it more accurate, but for now, I'm just gonna do it that way. And uh, throw in a little bit of hot glue to hold them in place. Okay, and then you use it like um, any gun sight. You line these two up and have it match a third point that you have to actually make a target with um, on the other side of the field. 
Okay, um, hope that gets you guys started at least and gets you thinking about how to make it better and how to improve and make a vehicle that wins at your invitational, regional, state, or national tournaments. Have a great year, guys.